a Skype interview with Dr. Michael Jeffries, um, who has been trending on social media because of his post. I think we have the post that we can share with you. We spoke to Shamla Maraj a little earlier on, and uh, once we put up that post, you will see that he was, he put the post up, and in it, he was talking about let's end dangerous behavior on the road, there it is, um, that's the picture that he was talking about, but his comments that went with it included, let's end dangerous behavior on the road, but stop dehumanizing disabled people on your mission there. How about consider the consequences of ads like this? Hashtag, there we go, hashtag ableist ad, hashtag ableism, hashtag disability. So on the line now, we have a lecturer in the communication uh, in the department, lecturer in communication in the Department of Literary, Cultural and Communication Studies at the University of the West Indies in Trinidad, in Trinidad, Dr. Michael Jeffries. Good morning. Good, good morning, Lisa. Good morning, Doc. And uh, it's interesting that you are a lecturer in communication because uh, what's wrong, what's right about this ad with regard to what is being attempted to be communicated? Well, Obviously, the purpose of the ad is uh, part of the Arrive Alive campaign, and it's, it's encouraging people to wear their seatbelts, and, and I support that general message of yeah. wearing seatbelts. I, I buckle up every time I, I get in my vehicle, uh, but there are lots of ways that we can communicate a message, mm -hmm. and, and, and one of the first things I teach my students in uh, messaging creating a, an ad campaign or, or trying to get a message across to a massive audience is you have to do audience analysis. You have to think about who is your audience because you can communicate um, the same message differently to different audiences. So in this case, just to, you know, my own experience, I've passed this sign dozens of times down on the Mendocino Highway and I understand the same billboard might be up in other locations uh, as part of this ad campaign uh, across the nation. <clears throat> and, and the wheelchair features prominently on it. That's, that's, what you, that's what jumps out at you is this mm -hmm. empty manual wheelchair. And it's interesting that it's an empty wheelchair, that you don't see a human being sitting in that wheelchair. It dehumanizes the issue, which I find problematic. Yeah. But in, in passing that ad, I never really paid attention to the words, right? And, and I just assumed it was an ad for a mobility service, like a health healthcare services provider who provides wheelchairs for people or things of that sort. And then I noticed that the large, uh, bold black letters of, of buckle up, right? And, and so I realized it was about buckling up, but then I just assumed, okay, that's great that they're encouraging people in wheelchairs wear seatbelts because there are a number of you know, thousands of accidents every year from people who fall out of their wheelchairs because they don't have a, uh, a seatbelt. Also, it could be to buckle down the wheelchair in a vehicle. So if you have an accessible van, for example, which there aren't a whole lot of, even in public transportation in Trinidad, but you need to tie it down, you need to strap it in. And it wasn't until I put it all together and I saw the smaller caption in white, consider the consequences and realize that it was the alive life, that, that what it was talking about is for an able-bodied person to consider the consequences of not wearing a seatbelt. And yeah. the consequence in this case would be the wheelchair. Right. And so it's using the mobility device as a scare tactic. Yeah. And, and, and it's not, you know, there are people in wheelchairs who don't necessarily take offense at this ad, mm -hmm. but that's not the issue. The issue is not whether this ad offends people who have disabilities. It's about how it continues to shape common stereotypes and percep public perceptions of people who have disabilities. Yeah. So in this case, in, instead of using a coffin, instead of showing a crumpled up, crashed vehicle, or a bloody person in, in a hospital bed, they show a wheelchair as if being in a wheelchair is worse than death. Right. 
Yes. And yeah. therefore, a person in a wheelchair is to be pitied. Mm -hmm. And it just creates this barrier and this obstacle for people in wheelchairs that we don't need. Yeah. And, and the fact of the matter is, Lisa, that two-thirds of people in wheelchairs are in a wheelchair not because of an accident, but because they have some sort of uh, disability that, that they, were, they were born with yeah. or acquired. Uh, such as muscular dystrophy or cerebral palsy, yeah. so on and so forth. As a matter of fact, we had two persons on this morning. Today is Tuesday, so it's our regular segment with Shamla Maraj, who of course has cerebral palsy, and she had her guest on Justin, the poet, and uh, we right. discussed it with them. I don't know if you saw that, but very interesting. I Shamla, saw part of it, yes. Right, so Shamla was saying exactly. that there's a plus and a negative because now what it does is that it brings, whenever there's a controversy, it, it it draws additional attention to the issue so that persons who are not even aware that it's impacted the lives of persons who live every day in a wheelchair because you have uh, drawn attention to it, it brings it to light. Yeah, I mean, it's the same. We, we see this throughout media, right? Mass media, whether it's ad campaigns like this that mean well, that are, that are trying to accomplish uh, a goal that is noble that we need, you know, yeah. wear your seatbelt. Yeah. Um, but how you communicate your message, and in this case, there's so many different ways yeah. that you get the message across. Like, in, you know, I'm, I'm from the U.S., and, and, and a popular and effective ad campaign there to wear seatbelts was click it or ticket. Right, right. Very yeah. simple, very catchy, and it, you know, yeah. and it was effective, and it, yeah. And it doesn't in any way uh, discriminate against any group of people. Yeah. And I, I want to add this, Lisa, too. When you think about just the, 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 the reality of people in wheelchairs, two-thirds of people in, in wheelchairs, uh, or rather, rather, of people in wheelchairs who are there because they had an accident or a, a spinal cord injury, that's only about one third of people who are in wheelchairs. Two thirds of the people in the wheelchairs, you know, didn't get it from mm -hmm. an accident. Yeah. Right. All right, uh, Dr. Michael Jeffries, we're gonna have to leave it there for time. But thank you so much for drawing attention to this issue and for coming on this morning to have this conversation with us. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me and, yeah. and for showcasing this important conversation. Absolutely. Dr. Michael Jeffries, their lecturer at the University of the West Indies. We're taking a few messages.